Nice here. In Minecraft, we can place a stone into a furnace and a smooth stone comes out. Can we do this in real life? No. Wait, but it is interesting to talk about. And it gives me an excuse to talk about loss on ignition. In Minecraft, a furnace is used for a lot of different operations. We dry things, we smelt things, we cook things in it. And in real life, the temperature you do this at is very different. In real life, drying something like kelp would be done at a relatively low temperature, but cooking something like potatoes, chicken, or fish would be up around the 200s. But smelting something like iron would be much higher, around 1500 degrees C. And other things like firing bricks or glazing terracotta would be around 1200 degrees C. Drying a sponge would be maybe, you know, over room temperature, maybe above boiling, depending on how fast you want it to get done. But something like melting sand into glass would be like over 1700 degrees C. We can also look at the fuel sources that we have. A normal wood fire can sustain itself starting around 250 degrees C and can get as hot as like 1000 degrees C. Most lava falls in the range of 700 to 1200 degrees C and coal burns from around 500 degrees C to almost 2000 degrees C. But these high temperatures are only possible with a blast furnace where you are forcing oxygen into the furnace to increase the rate of chemical reaction. Most home ovens can get around 260 degrees C without too much problem, maybe up to like 500 degrees C in a self-cleaning cycle. But I have a few furnaces at work that go a little over 1000 degrees C, and this tiny one will be perfect to try some things. I have this little rock cube. Let's put it in the oven and see if it gets smooth. But how long do we leave the stone in the furnace for? Rabbits, are you okay? You need some help? They're fine. A Minecraft day is 20 minutes or 1200 seconds, and smelting takes 10 seconds if we're just using the normal furnace. So that's 0.833 repeating percent of a day. A real life day is 24 hours or 1440 minutes, and therefore smelting would take 12 minutes in a real world. Okay, 12 minutes are up. Let's see what it looks like. The surface is cracked, and I definitely wouldn't call it smooth. I'm actually really surprised that it stayed together. It's pretty fragile, and just putting a little bit of pressure on it, it just crumbles into powder. So what's going on here? The stone that I put in the furnace was limestone, a rock made up of almost entirely calcium carbonate. In an earlier video, I suggested that limestone is a good choice for what stone represents in real life. Calcium carbonate undergoes thermal decomposition at temperatures above 650 degrees C. It'll break down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. This conversion is often used in geology to learn things about the content of rocks, and it's usually called loss on ignition, or LOI. There are a few temperatures besides 1000 degrees C that we can use to learn things about soils and rocks. I have some soil here and some powdered not granite that I used in the education video. We can weigh out about 5 grams of each sample and put them into these high temperature crucibles, which I already know the empty weight of. Oddly enough, they're made by the same company that make Coors beer. This is a low temperature furnace used for drying. For soils, it's important to know the moisture content. For rocks, we usually don't care, but we dry them so we have a dry weight. If we measure that dry weight, then we know how much of the sample was originally water. After measuring, we can put them into the high temperature furnace at 400 degrees C. This will burn off any organics and leave the carbonate minerals. Both organics and carbonates have carbon in them, and it can be difficult to determine how much carbon is organic versus inorganic. And this is a coarse but easy way to do it. Normally we don't do this step for rocks because they don't have organic material in them. Weigh again to determine how much of the original material was organic. Back into the furnace at 1000 degrees C. We have to let the samples cool down a little bit, but we still want to measure them when they're pretty warm because they could start absorbing moisture in the air and that will change the weight. The soil is now this rusty orange color because any iron that's in the soil is oxidized now. Weigh one last time and then we get our carbonate values. So now we can look at the results, and with a little math, we can calculate the percents and see that soil had a few percent of water, organics, and carbonates, while the igneous rock was low in all of those, as expected. Rock is the only smooth variety that we make in a furnace. The others are made using the rock cutter, and they're called polished, but I wanted to put more rocks in the furnace anyway. So let's see what happens if I put granite, andesite, and sandstone in the furnace. And I'm also putting another limestone in here for reasons.
No major changes to the sandstone, which makes sense since we are 700 degrees away from its melting point. The andesite turned to this orange color due to the iron oxidizing. And this is the same reason bricks are orange, and why terracotta in-game changes color when you fire it. The granite didn't really change at all. We can also make cracked bricks in the furnace, so I wanted to try something. Well, it cracked. I always thought of cracked bricks as happening due to thermal stresses. I wanted to shock the cube and see what would happen. We already destroyed the minerals in here, so it's probably just falling apart as it absorbs water. I had an extra piece of granite, so I wanted to see if that would crack too. But no luck. This would probably work if I had a bigger rock. So where did this idea to make smooth stone in the furnace come from anyway? I assume because at the time, the furnace was all there was. It can kind of make sense if you're thinking about it like a glaze. The surface is melting and becoming smooth, maybe. I mostly just wanted an excuse to talk about LOI. I think it's neat that you can learn some things just by cooking samples, and the technique has been used for decades, and it's just a really simple method to apply. This also helps with further analyses. By burning off CO2, you're concentrating the remaining elements, and it makes them easier to measure. Anyway, that's it for the episode. I hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Still fresh from the oven. <laughs>